So now that you've learned how to take your body measurements, you are going to want to know how much fabric to buy and what size item that you're gonna be making with your pattern. I have chosen this pattern. It makes all of these different things. This is the front of the envelope. It shows you the views of the front of the garment. And then on the back of the envelope, it's gonna have the back view. So what it looks like from the back. These might be an actual picture or these might be a sketch. This half of the envelope is in another language. So we're gonna fold it in half and get out of the way because we only care about this part. On the flap, you're gonna find information such as the pattern number and the pricing code. Um, for example, this one is a green pattern. So you would pay whatever amount the green patterns are selling for. I have chosen to make pant B, which is shorts. And so I'm going to be using 45 inch wide fabric. That brings me to my first point, the type of fabric you buy for your first project. You do not wanna get 60 inch wide fabric. That's either a specialty fabric or a knit fabric. 45 inches wide means when you measure it selvage to selvage, so from one selvage to the other, it's going to be around 44 to 45 inches wide. If this was a knit fabric, it would be around 55 to 60 inches wide. There are a bunch of different types of fabrics out there. I suggest that you choose a small overall print that doesn't have a distinct uh, direction. So notice how these go in all different directions. That's good. That's um, gonna prevent you from having to try to match up if the penguins are right side up or upside down. It also helps to avoid stripes and plaids because if you're trying to match up the edge of a garment, and it's a stripe or a plaid that takes extra fabric and a little bit of extra skill. So it's very helpful. Um, it helps your project to not look cheap too, because when you buy something that has unmatched stripes and plaids, it's usually because it's pretty cheap. All right, how to know what size you are and how much fabric to buy? Well, you're gonna take yourself a marker or a pen and you're gonna mark your measurements on the chart. So earlier today, I took my bust measurement and I took my hip measurement. For my bust measurement, I measured into the 38 and a half range. And then for my hip measurement, I was 42. So I measured in between a medium and a large. I'm going to talk um, a little bit about design ease. You guys learned about that last time. These are really loose fitted pajama shorts. And so I'm going to actually go down a size I'm gonna go down to the medium. If it was a tight fitted design, as you know from wearing ease, uh, our lesson last time, you would want to go up a size. So I'm gonna go down to the mediums. I highlighted all the way down the medium column. So no matter what I'm making, I can see how much fabric I need. This is the yardage chart. I have chosen to make pant B. So I'm gonna highlight across 45 inch wide, can't be. And where they cross, that's how much fabric I need to buy. So right here, where they cross at, it says I need one and three eighths of a yard. So almost one and a half yards. If you're buying fabric for the first time, go to the fabric store. It's going to come on the bolt. It's going to be just like this folded in half, and it's going to be wrapped around a cardboard insert called a bolt. And they're going to measure it for you at the cutting table. So this right here, is two and a half yards, which is plenty for my first project, especially since I'm making the shorts. I am going to bring that home. I'm going to wash it um, according to the instructions on the bolt. I'm going to make sure that I wash it first because this fabric has been starched to keep it from getting really wrinkly. And you want to make sure you wash that so that it the fabric is allowed to behave in the way that it wants to behave and so you end up with something that's on grain. So I've purchased the amount of fabric I need. Also on the back of the pattern envelope is a section down at the bottom called um, suggested fabrics and requirements. Suggested fabrics give you some suggestions for what type of fabric you should and should not buy. For this particular uh, project, these pajamas, says that it's okay to buy cotton, cotton blends, flannel, laundered cotton, chambray, poplin, seersucker, silk, jersey, linen, and 
If I'm gonna be doing plaids or stripes, I need to have extra fabric. It doesn't tell me any fabric specifically to avoid. So what I purchased was just a cotton blend of a small overall print. I chose a dark color and I chose a quilter's grade cotton. I did not go with broadcloth. Broadcloth is just really thin and it's usually in solid colors. You wanna hold it up to the light and see if you can see through it. Because if you can see through it before you've made it, you can see through it once you've made it. You also wanna look at your requirements. Requirements are things that you need in addition to the fabric to purchase. So for this particular project, it tells me that I need one package of half inch wide twill tape. This is twill tape, it's just like a solid ribbon. And I need one package of elastic that is three fourths of an inch wide. You don't wanna skip this part because if you need a zipper or a button or some interfacing, something special, it's gonna be listed in the notions or the requirements. And if you go home without that, you won't be able to start on your The four different fabric folds are as follows. You have to first be able to identify the selvages. So the selvage here, sometimes it's really noticeable like this one here. If you are folding fabric lengthwise, that is where selvage A and selvage B come together. And depending on how much fabric you're working with, it's usually a long fold. Um, selvage to selvage, which is called a lengthwise fold. Crosswise is the exact opposite. You fold selvage A over on top of itself. And selvage B ends up doing the same thing. It folds on top of itself. A crosswise fold is usually a little bit wider, depending on how much fabric you're working with. You have something called a double fold. A double fold is where both of the selvages come to the middle and they meet right in the center. This one's a little bit harder to show you up in the air as opposed to flat. This is if you're making a shirt, you would want this to be the right side and this to be the left side because it would unfold and this would unfold and it would become a shirt. If you are working with some small pattern pieces, for example, maybe you're trying to cut out this pocket or you want to cut out these waistband pieces, you would do a partial fold. Notice how I'm folding my fabric right sides together. I would only fold it big enough to fit the pattern piece. So I would get my pattern piece out and I would see how big it was and I would make sure that it fits on here. You always fold your fabric right sides together. 